Hello guys, welcome to Deep Codes and in today's video we will discuss lead code question 373 that says find k pairs with smallest sum. So guys, although this question is tagged as a lead code medium level, but this is somewhere between medium to hard level because the intuition to form to solve this question is a bit difficult. Okay. So yeah, this question is not uh, like easy, easy medium, but a, a bit higher level than the medium. Uh, so yeah, guys, stick till there and watch the complete video in order to know how to solve this type of question. So here. Uh, you would be given two now uh, to add a nums one and nums two, and you need to find k pairs with the smallest value. So a pair is nothing but uh, containing two digit, one digit from nums one and the another with uh, from the nums two. So taking a digit from both these array, you can form one pair, and you need to find k such pairs with the smallest sum. Okay. So question is very easy to understand that we simply need to find pairs by taking both uh, nums one and nums two, considering both uh, these arrays, and we need to find such pairs that have the smallest sum. And yeah, we need to find k such pairs. So if you take a look at the first example here, so this is the nums one given, and this is the nums two, and you need to find k the k equals to three. That means three smallest sum pair. Sum is nothing but sum of value of the pair of from the nums one and the pair, nums two. So one pair is one comma two. And whose sum is three? So another pair is one comma four, whose sum is five, and the next pair is one comma six, whose sum is seven. So these three pair, uh, these three pairs has the least sum. So if you consider any other other pair, like let's say uh, seven comma two, so there seven is this seven, and this two is this two, then that value is is that sum is nothing but nine, and that value is greater than uh, uh, seven, five, and three. So yeah, we haven't considered this since we only require three pairs here with a least sum. So yeah, these three are the pairs that have the least sum. Further, they have also given the sequence that if you want to find, let's say, all the pairs in the increasing order of the sum, then this is the sequence. So one comma two, one comma four, one comma six. These three pairs we return in the answer. So let's say if you want to return five pairs, then this two would be the fourth and fifth pair. And similarly, this is the complete sequence of pairs um, with the increasing sum. Okay, got it. Uh, so here in the next example, you need to find two pairs. So one is uh, considering this one and this one, and second is considering this one and this one. So this pair, one comma one and one comma one, has the sum list, and that's why we return these two pairs as our answer. So yeah, guys, I hope you guys uh, you guys have got what we are trying to do in this question. We are simply trying to find the pairs with the least sum. Okay. Now uh, just take a look at the constraints. So here the k or the total number of pairs that you have to return. Is up till 10 to the power 4. So we can write a uh, big O of k or big O of k log k solution here. Okay. So we will use this insight in further. So if you, if I ask you, let's say you this question you have to solve in brute force approach. Means if you don't consider any time complexity or the space complexity, you can use uh, any possible way to solve this question. Then how would you solve it? So the way, if you want to apply brute force approach, then the way is. You uh, for try to form all the different pairs that is possible. So if a size of the nums one is n one, and the size of nums two array is n two, then total number of pairs possible is n one multiplied by n two. Okay, so you form all these pairs, you store all these pairs, then you sort these pairs based on the sum. So what you can do is you can take a um, pair of pair of int, so something like this: pair of int, comma pair of int int. You can uh, take some vector like this, where this will store sum, and this will store i n j index. i th index is the index in the nums one, and j th index is the index in the nums two. So you can store all the pairs along with their sum in some vector, and then sort uh, these pairs based on their sum, and then you can select the k uh, pairs with the least sum, that is the first k elements from their sorted vector. So yeah, guys, this is one way to solve this question, and this is the brute force approach you can try. So here the time complexity would be n1 n2 log of n1 n2. See n1 n2 is the total number of pairs that is possible. Um, and yeah, we are sorting. So sorting takes n log of n time. So the yeah, total number of pairs is n1 n2. So this would be the time complexity here. And that will surely give you a TLE because n1, if you see, n1 can be up to 10 to the power 5. That means the size of the nums 1 can be up to the 10, up to 10 to the power 5, as well as size of nums 2 can be up to 10 to the power 5. So 10 to the power 5 multiplied by 10 to the power 5 is nothing but 10 to the power 10. And if you take n log n for this, then it is a very high value. So one thing is clear that if you try to form all possible pairs and select uh, the pairs with a list sum from that, then it will uh, all, it will surely give you time limit exceeded. Now, basing, using this 
uh, brute force approach as our base, we will try to derive more optimal solution. So for that, what we can do is instead of forming all the pairs that we used to do in brute force, can we uh, simply form the pairs uh, some by using some smart moves? We that means we only try to form the pairs that are required. Okay, no instead of forming all the pairs. Okay, so what we can do is. See, nums one is sorted, nums two is also sorted. Okay, so let's say if I ask you that you need to find one pair for any given nums one array and any given nums two array, you need to find only one pair, and that pair would would be nothing but taking the zeroth index from the nums one as well as zeroth index from the nums two, right? And summing them up will give you the least sum. So that means if you want to find uh, one pair, then that would be nothing but uh, considering a zeroth element from the nums one and zeroth element from the nums two. And that would be your answer. Now let's say if you want to find the second least sum pair, then what would that be? So that would be nothing but taking the zeroth index from nums one and first index from nums two, or taking the first index from nums one and zeroth from nums two. So you can uh, you can prove this by taking any examples of nums one and nums two. This would be only uh, this this would be the uh, first pair with a least um, sum. Now if you want to find second pair with a least sum, then you would we have these two choices only. Means uh, any one of these two choices will result in the second least sum pair. So for an example, just consider zero and one as the least pair. Okay, from these two, these two choices consider zero and one uh, with this uh, pair with this indexes as a least sum. Now, if you want to find the third pair with the least sum, then that pair would be nothing but either see one comma zero that is remaining here. So either this pair, either this pair, or one comma one or zero comma two. So uh, the third least sum pair would be nothing but pairs from these three uh, options only. Okay, so this is how if you take a look that there is some relation between the previous least pair and the options for the next least sum pair. And what is the relation? That relation is nothing but if your current answer is i and j, so the current answer is nothing but index i and j. The next possible answer are i plus one j and i j plus one. Uh, along with some previous pairs um, that are remaining okay so here let's say uh, this was our answer 0 comma 1 the next possible answer is 1 comma 1 that is i plus 1 j or i j plus 1 0 comma 2 along with some pairs that were previously remaining okay that were no, that is not uh, still in in an answer so this is also possible answer here for the third uh, list sum pair okay got it clear deal here so that's why uh, this is by uh, by considering the current answer we will derive what are the possible pairs or the options for the next answer okay so uh, yeah that's uh, and one another thing we are comparing uh, the sum of these pairs at each step so in order to get uh, the pair with the min uh, minimum sum what we would do is we would use a priority queue or a min heap to get the pair with a least sum so yeah we would store the sum along with the ith and jth index into the verb min heap and uh, and every time for every kth iteration we would take or pop uh, the topmost element of the min heap and insert two new elements this these two new elements okay got it so in so in the brute force approach instead of considering all the pairs we have observed that if the current answer is i and j so so for the next iteration we can consider i plus one comma j or i j plus one as a possible answers so yeah, if you uh, let's try to make a dry run for better understanding. So if you have some nums one array like this and nums two array like this and k is seven. So initially we would push the zeroth index of both the nums one and nums two to our mean heap. So we will initialize the mean heap by zero comma zero this pair. Then for k equal to one, we are sure that the pair with the least sum would be nothing but uh, the zeroth index from nums one and zeroth index from num from nums two. And also this would be present at the top of mean heap for k equal to one. So we would pop it. Now, whenever we pop it, uh, pop some element, we would do two operation. That is, push i plus one or and push i j plus one. So i plus one j is nothing but zero comma one, and uh, i j plus one is one uh, one comma zero. Uh, you got it right. Okay. So for k equals to two, you have these two elements or these two pairs in the mean heap. Now from that, the topmost element would be the element with the minimum sum. So we pop out the topmost element and then. Uh, from the indices of the element that we popped out, we again push two elements. That is i plus one j and i j plus one. That is, if we uh, popped out zero comma one, then we will push one comma one or zero comma two. That is i plus one j or i j plus one, right? 
So now k equal to 3, we would have three elements. So one that was remaining, one comma zero was remaining. And these two new elements that we have pushed, zero comma two and one comma one. Now we would also again pop out the least uh, sum from this. Okay, so let's say this is uh, this element has the least sum, so we would pop it out. Okay, now the for the next iteration, we again push two things. That is one comma two and zero comma three. Now if you would see that zero comma three is invalid because the index of nums two is up to two, zero, one and two. 0, 1 and 2. So we cannot have th index 3 in the nums 2. So this is invalid. So we won't push it. This is out of bound. Okay. So we won't push this element into our priority queue. We will simply push 1, 2. So at, uh, at, at now we have these three elements in the priority queue. And let us consider that this 1, 0 is the least, uh, has the least sum from all these three. Now we again have to, uh, we pop that out. And for the next k, we push two elements that is i plus 1j and i j plus 1. So if you consider i j plus 1, that is 1 comma 1, that, that is already present in the priority queue. So that means we also have to consider the visited array or the array that was already visited or the array or the uh, elements or the pairs that is already present in the priority queue. So in this approach, we have to keep track of whether the new uh, pairs that we push are out, are, are out of bound or not. Secondly, uh, thus uh, thus this pair is already visited or not so two things we have to keep in mind out of bounds and visited thing so yeah uh, further with the same approach you can uh, find the answer of k equals to 5 k equals to 6 as well as k equal to 7 okay each time we are trying to uh, pop one element and push two elements if the new elements are not visited as well as if they are inside our bounds so guys by this approach if we go through this approach then we have to also keep track of our visited pairs okay got it clear till here so yeah, coding for this approach is very much simple. If you have understood that what we are trying to do here, three operation, pop, push i plus one, common j, push i, j plus one. So yeah, three operations. So uh, here, uh, in order to uh, keep track of what are the visited pairs, we have used set. See guys, if you use unordered set, then you uh, unordered set, unordered set, the keys of unordered set cannot be paired. So means you cannot store pairs in keys of unordered uh, set so that's why we have used set here because unordered set or unordered map won't uh, allow you to store pair of int in as a key okay so yeah we have used set uh, then yeah this is the priority queue this is pair of pair means the first int will store the sum and the next two will uh, store the i in the jth index okay and yeah we will iterate up to up till k minus minus or until the mean heap is empty Okay, so that is the third example also that here in the third example key was given three but only pair possible was two. So if there are no more pairs possible then also we would stop. Okay, so that's why this is our base condition for the while loop. And yeah, what we do is, uh, see we initialize with um, zero comma zero, right? Inside the mean heap. Then yeah, we pop uh, the topmost element. Okay, now uh, we push uh, that uh, element i and jth index uh, into our answer, answer vector. Then we will check i for i plus one comma j if it is visited or not. If not, then push it into the mean heap and mark it visited. And also we would check uh, i j plus one. So for this pair, if it is uh, not visited, then yeah, add to the visit add to the mean heap as well as mark it as visited. So yeah, guys, this is one approach to solve this question. Now talking about the time and space complexity for this approach is k log k plus k log k. That means if you have if you are processing k pairs then at max the size of the mean heap would be this as well as the ordered set would take this time complexity. So for the space complexity, this one is for mean heap that is a, a priority queue and this one is for ordered set. Okay. So this is the time and space complexity for this approach. Now guys, you can see that we are uh, using uh, this visited array or the ordered set here. But there is also one approach where we don't have to take care of the visited array. Okay, we don't have to take care of the pairs that are visited, so we won't require order set. So we don't have to uh, spend this extra time uh, and space uh, just to maintain whether the pair is visited or not. So in that approach, what we would do is we would initially store all nums of i with uh, pair pairing with nums of nums two of zero. It means that means all i comma zero pairs. Okay, we would store all these pairs in our min heap. Yeah, and then for the all pop operation so whenever we pop initially what we were doing we used to push i plus 1 j and i j plus 1 but now in this approach we would push only i j plus 1 because i plus 1 j would be already handled in the past right so yeah this is the new approach where we would push all i comma 0 pairs 
right into our main hip and then on each pop operation we would simply push i hip this part if it is not out of the bound okay so if you, i uh, so this is uh, this approach is proposed in the discuss section and yeah, as well as this image is a part of one solution in the discuss section right so uh, here what we did is uh, for the uh, k elements of the nums one we combined with the zeroth index of the nums two see what i told you i comma zero pair right so we made this pair 1 comma 2 7 comma 2 we learned comma 2 and 16 comma 2 and we initialize green hip with this pair okay now from here at a step one or k equals to one our answer would be this pair now when we uh, remove 1 comma 2 what we push we push i j plus 1 that is pairing with 1 and 9 see 1 and 9 this pair we pushed right so uh, this so now the mean hip would contain this thing this many pairs okay so now let's say 7 comma 2 is this pair is your answer so when you remove this element the 7 and 2 then you would push i j plus 1 that is 7 and 9 see you have pushed 7 and 9 now so yeah for each pop operation we will push i j plus 1 pair right because let's say uh, uh, the thing is that uh, if you uh, now have uh, confusion that why we are not uh, push uh, i plus one jth pair why why we don't push this one because that is that would be already a part of the mean hip so if you consider this one comma two that is zero comma zero this is zeroth index as well as zeroth index so for this we are uh, we simply push zero comma one right and not one comma zero because one comma zero that is seven two pair was already there so we don't push this thing because we have initialized the mean hip with all these pairs i comma zero pairs right so for each time i plus one j pairs would be already present and we only push i and j plus one pair right at each step for each pop we only push this thing and not i j plus one i plus one j okay so yeah by doing this approach you will try you will find out that there is no requirement or to maintain the visited uh array or with let's say visited ordered set because we don't we, we won't visit any uh pairs for the second time so if you try to make a dry run uh, with two three different examples then you can get that idea yeah here in this pair we only process the pair once and we won't visit it twice so yeah there is no chances of uh, visiting a pair two times so we don't need the visited um, order uh, order set or something to store whether the pair is visited or not so yeah guys that's why this approach is efficient approach now talking about the code for this approach so here uh, this is the priority key or mean hip. This is it is the same as the previous one. It is a pair of pair, and yeah, we first uh, initialize the priority uh, queue or the mean hip with k element of nums one pairing with the zeroth index of nums two. We pair k elements of nums one pair with zeroth index of the nums two. Now this uh, this is uh, same as the above. That for k times, what we do is we take the uh, the topmost element, we pop it out, we add the elements to our answer, and then we push new elements or new pairs then new pairs are j plus one i comma j plus one right uh, and the, yeah if the if it is out of bound then we won't do else we will perform this push operation and yeah at the end we return the answer so guys by you by performing uh, uh this approach our time complexity reduces to k log k as we are simply processing k elements into our priority queue k times and the space complexity is big of k uh, that would be taken by the priority queue so yeah guys uh, from from the starting from the brute force approach we understand that yeah uh, what would be the smart way of pairing the elements from nums1 and nums2 then we realize that in that approach we have to also maintain one visited uh, visited or uh, order set or some data structure to store visited pairs and then we find that this new approach where we initialize priority queue for key elements of num1 pairing with the zeroth index of nums2 and then for each pop operation we simply push i j plus one pair and in that way we won't uh, visit any pair for the second time so yeah, guys by using this up by moving step by step towards the optimal uh, approach we reduce our time complexity to big of k log k so yeah guys that's all for this video i i also understand that this question has a bit difficult to form the intuition yeah the intuition forming part was difficult here but okay there are some questions uh, present on the lead code means there would be some question on any of the platform that uh, might require some dry run or some uh, uh, like uh, what i can say is you you have to do some pen paper work in order to build the observation as well as intuition okay so yeah guys that's all for this video if you have still any doubts then do let me know in the comment section make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel thank you